Everybody, welcome to the show. Another Thursday, another episode of Simply Sessions. Now, this week, a little bit different. Uh, Nico is en route to Nashville for the live stream of the Bitcoin halving, but that will not stop us. Of course, Nico has queued up all of the most important stories of the week, and we will be hitting the tech updates after that as well. So, if you haven't already, please do like, subscribe, share. All those things help a ton getting this content in front of more eyeballs. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your Simply Session. Hodl the Bitcoin. Bitcoin Well is on a mission to enable independence by being one of the easiest and quickest ways to purchase Bitcoin in Canada and the US. And the best part about it, every buy goes directly into your own self-custody. They never hold your coins. You can add a Bitcoin address as part of onboarding. There's a transparent 1% spread, no hidden fees, no withdrawal fees. Plus they have KYC free sales and bill payments on their website. They're also a publicly traded company under the ticker BTC on the TSX V. Check them out over at BitcoinWell.com. Check out my full tutorial on how to use them. And you can check out the links in the show notes down below and sign up today. CoinKite.com has some of the best hardware on the market today to secure your Bitcoin. The cold card queue is an absolute powerhouse and is my daily driver. And on top of this, they have plenty of other goodies, including the Mark IV, the Tap Signer, Open Dimes, the Block Clock, and much more. If you head over to their website, make sure you use code BTC Sessions at checkout to get a nice discount. Links are in the show notes down below. Backups are important and Cedor.io has one of the most robust and beautifully designed steel backup solutions on the market today. You can stamp your seed phrase into solid steel with one of their starter kits for one or two seeds and secure your seed phrase from the elements like fire, water and corrosion. On top of this, if you ever need to swap out any of the information therein, you can just grab a new set of disks and slide them into the capsule as you see fit. I've done a full tutorial on them that you can check out. Otherwise, click the links down below for the best shipping options for you. Yo, welcome to another episode of Simply Sessions. Let's catch you guys up on this week's Bitcoin news. I'm going to be in Nashville this week. Uh, three, two, one. Yo, welcome to another ep- la, 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 la. Three, two, one. Yo, welcome to another episode of Simply Sessions. I'm in Nashville this week, so won't be able to do it live, but still, we got to get you guys the weekly Bitcoin news. So let's start off with the ETF approval coming out of Hong Kong. Now, they say Hong Kong, but in reality, what is actually happening is China, that's right, China is using Hong Kong to launch a Bitcoin ETF. You know, it's really interesting, and this kind of reminds me of this article that Alex Gladstein wrote, and the the name of the article was that uh, Bitcoin is a Trojan horse for freedom. And he described how governments, nation states, all these powerful institutions are going to want to take advantage of NGU technology, but get away from the freedom enabling technology. But well, Alex Gladstein makes the case that they're inextricably linked. You can't separate NGU from FGU, freedom go up. So yeah, very interesting how, you know, how this has been playing out. This is something that we've covered throughout the weeks on Simply Sessions. But anyways, let me read a little bit from the article. Hong Kong gives initial Bitcoin Ether ETF nod. Hong Hong Kong gave conditional approvals for asset managers to start spot Bitcoin and Ether exchange traded funds. The firm said a development that boosted both tokens in the wider crypto market. Now, first thing that I want you guys to pay attention to is Harvest Global Investments LTD. Again, they mention Hong Kong, but even though... Hong Kong supposedly has the one country, two systems model where mainland China has a different set of laws than Hong Kong because Hong Kong was a British colony. Over the last couple of years, it seems like China, the CCP has been cracking down on Hong Kong. It's they, it, Hong Kong belongs to China. That's the reality of the situation. So what they're you what they're doing is that they're taking advantage of this kind of isolated city state 
to take advantage of NGU without exposing the rest of the mainland to Bitcoin. Anyways, so this company, Harvest Global Investments LTD, you know what's really interesting about it is that it's not based in Hong Kong, it's actually based in Beijing, China. They have about $230 billion assets under management, and here's an article back in 2023 where it says, the quiet part out long, Hong Kong's crypto hub ambitions win quiet backing from Beijing. In October, Hong Kong rolled out the red carpet for crypto businesses to help revitalize the embattled financial hub. Signs are now emerging. The push has has under the radar backing from Beijing. Representatives from China's liaison office and other officials have been frequent guests at the city's crypto gatherings over the past months, swapping business cards and WeChat details, said people familiar with the matter who asked not to be named discussing private information. The encounters have been friendly, with officials checking in on developments, asking for reports, and in some cases, making follow-up calls, the people said. So, what is happening right now? The ETFs in the United States got approval in January. And of course, China being a competitor of the United States, they said, whoa, we can't let we can't be left behind. So they're using Hong Kong as a proxy so that China could have the Chinese ETFs and they could take advantage of Bitcoin and not get left behind. It's really interesting how the game theory is, is uh, playing out. And again, once again, Bitcoin's incentives stay winning. And one of the most tyrannical countries on the face of the earth, they can't help but to want to get exposure to Bitcoin. In other news, Norway wants to have fun staying poor. The article is, Norway wants to curb Bitcoin mining, Europe's first data center regulation. Norway has introduced new legislation to regulate data centers. While the proposal is not explicitly targeted at Bitcoin miners, the sentiment expressed by the country's top official politicians promise increased scrutiny for Bitcoin miners. Here are some of the quotes uh, from the Ener energy minister. They're not welcome in Norway. We want serious actors who are important to society and the society serving computer industry is important to us. Bitcoin mining is associated with large greenhouse gas emissions and is an example of a type of business we do not want in Norway. A according to Hashrate Index, Norway is the largest hydro Europe's hydro uh, power producer and accounts for less than 3% of Bitcoin's hash rate. Now, I believe this is political. Why do I believe this is political? Well, he says it right here. Bitcoin mining is associated with large greenhouse gas emissions. How is that even possible if... 100% of the electricity generated in Norway comes from so-called renewable energies, hydro and wind. And that 2% that, uh, that, uh, that is to the total electricity generation in Norway, well, Bitcoin miners use 100% renewable energy. Now, another thing that they left out conveniently also is that the vast majority of Bitcoin mining in Norway is happening in the northern Norway far away from the population centers. And the reason for that is, is that Bitcoin uses stranded energy. Electricity, if you transport it over large distances, it loses a, per a percent of its, of its efficiency. You can't store it. Uh, battery technologies are not quite there. If you've ever left an iPhone unplugged overnight, even if it has 100%, you'll wake up the next day, it has 98, 99%. You have to use electricity when it is produced, right? And it creates a perfect situation where if you have stranded energy pockets, Bitcoin miners go in there and they use it. It's cheap electricity. So again, another political political attack. But again, you know, it just creates an opportunity for other Bitcoin miners all over the world uh, to pick off where Norway left off. It's it just I, I expect these political attacks to continue to ramp, ramp up because I think politicians and central bankers and all these people that are used to controlling the money, you know, I think they're going to try and say anything and everything, uh, you know, to retain that privilege of being able to create money for free that everyone has to work for. In other news, here's the Telegram CEO, and uh, this is awesome. I'll play the clip. Also, for me, it was never about money, right? So I have a few hundred million dollars in my bank account or in Bitcoin since 10 years ago, and uh, I don't do anything with it. I don't own any like, real estate, jets, uh, or yachts i don't think those uh, uh this lifestyle is for me i like to focus on what we are doing uh with telegram you don't own anything 
Like yeah. big assets. You don't no, own no big assets. Exactly. An island in Hawaii or no, 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 no land, no real estate, nothing. Why? Well, because for me, my number one priority in life is my freedom. Also, for me, it was never about money, right? So I have. A so here you have the Telegram CEO again, not a, very a public figure. He doesn't do a lot of interviews. Here's there. He's going there on Tucker, and he's literally saying the quiet part out loud. Look, I don't really own a lot of material possessions. I don't really like own yachts and all these things. What I'm focused on is Telegram, and you know the liquidity that I do have. I have it in cash in a bank account. Cash, I think, is the key word, and Bitcoin. And of course, the very end, that's a very powerful phrase. My number one priority in life is my freedom. This is someone who grew up in the USSR, in the Soviet Union, so he knows how bad things could get. Now, in terms of the Overton window, this is a big shift. Again, once again, you see Bitcoin going from unthinkable to radical to acceptable to sensible. In El Salvador, it's already policy. But once again, things are shifting. People are waking up to the reality that they can use a non-government currency. They're waking up to the reality that you, uh, money can exist without losing purchasing power. They're waking up to the reality of, hey, Holy cow, you know, uh, Bitcoin is freedom. Remember, when Tucker approached uh, Boris Johnson, the previous prime minister of the United Kingdom, what did he ask uh, Tucker to pay him in? He asked him to pay him in dollars, gold, and Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin, we hear this over and over again from very powerful billionaires to politicians. They want to be paid in Bitcoin. Hey, you know, if it wasn't real money, if it was just, you know, this giant tulip bubble Ponzi scheme, then I think uh, people wouldn't want to accept it. In other news, El Salvador, El Salvador literally uh, inaugurates its office. Uh, Google inaugurates its offices in the shining country on a hill, El Salvador. This is absolutely massive. Google is a behemoth con uh, company. It's one of the uh, it's one of the, uh, you know, the, the tech stocks here in the United States. And of course, El Salvador, because of its leader, because of its policies, they're attracting, uh, you know, this type of investment. This is absolutely huge for the country. The job opportunities it's going to create, uh, this is massive. And they have a giant Google sign. I mean, very, very good news. Here's the official announcement. Uh, hello, El Salvador. We're opening our new offices to support digital transformation. Right. So it goes on to say today we are excited to announce the opening of, a, of of our offices in El Salvador. This is an important step as we move forward in our commitment to help support the country's digital transformation, including the modernization of the government services and economic development. Since August 2023, we've announced a collaboration agreement signed with El Salvador. We have focused on supporting the country in modernizing its processes, processes and the services provided to its citizens, as well as offering training to different government entities. In addition to announcing the opening of a new office, we also want to share the progress we have made as part of this agreement in the areas of digital government, health care, health and education. Now, what's really interesting about Google also is that it holds about $110 billion in cash. As Michael Saylor has proven with MicroStrategy, which has outperformed everything else, including the tech stocks, including the S&P 500, including gold, that the Bitcoin strategy is sound. So even if, even if, even with inflation, let's say it's at 5%, right? Google is losing 5% of its purchasing power of that $110 billion. They're literally holding on to a melting ice cube. Imagine if, not 100%, but imagine if they just held 5% of that $110 billion in Bitcoin. Not only will it... Um, not only will it compensate for that 5% that they're losing in purchasing power due to inflation, but it will actually like even increase their cash, their, their so-called cash position and their liquidity position, right? I think it's just a matter of time before tech companies wake up to this reality. But anyways, really exciting news in the Bitcoin world. The halving is coming up tomorrow. Love you all, Ben. I will see you next week. Take care, everybody. When it comes to assisted multi-sig and inheritance planning, it's hard to beat nunchuck.io and their Honey Badger program. On your mobile device, they allow you to set up a full multi-signature vault 
And once it's done, you have baked in inheritance planning so that your Bitcoin gets to your next of kin if anything should happen to you. On top of this, the entire thing can be set up with devices like the tap signer, the cold card, and plenty more options. And the whole thing can be done without KYC. You don't need to give up your personal information to have it set up and working for you. You can check them out today over at nunchuck.io. Debify.com allows you to borrow against your Bitcoin in a non-custodial way. Collateral is held in a three of four distributed multi-sig with trusted parties. It provides institutional liquidity providers loan periods of up to five years with flexible conditions and the best rates. And best of all, no rehypothecation of your funds. If you want to check them out today, head over to debify.com or hit the link in the show notes down below. Thank you, Nico, for hitting that for us. We are now going to dive into the tech updates. And the first thing I want to chat about is uh, a really cool introduction of something called cash vouchers with Bitcoin Well. Now, this is specifically within Canada, uh, but it may apply to those of you that were using the post office previously to get uh, some non-KYC corn and uh, are sad that that program is coming to an end this may be an alternative for you so let's take a look so bitcoin well uh they did a little thread introducing cash vouchers use cash to buy bitcoin uh at bitcoin well um, there's a three percent cash voucher fee it's available to fully verified and light accounts and we'll chat about that momentarily so how do you buy a cash voucher you get a, a voucher qr code from your account so you would have an account on bitcoin well you'd go to a bitcoin well atm they have a ton of them around the country you scan the qr code and then insert cash so uh you redeem the cash voucher it's available within your well account immediately um, Bitcoin is sent directly to your personal Bitcoin address when you redeem your cash voucher, just like as if you had funded the account via bank transfer. Uh, and it is available again on light and fully verified accounts. Now, this is the interesting part. What is a light account? And this is my favorite part. So a light account at Bitcoin Well is email address and username. It's, you're el eligible with just an email address and a username to buy and sell Bitcoin under $1,000 a transaction, transactions totaling up to $3,000 per day. Uh, there's a 2% transaction spread on light accounts. Now, how does it compare to a verified account? Um, verified, you have to have email, phone, and ID verified there's no transaction limits and there's a smaller spread of only 1%. Um, so obviously trade-offs there, but if you're an individual that maybe doesn't want to have all of your personal information sitting on a website and you still like the idea of being able to buy Bitcoin with cash without having to give up all that information, well, there's an option available for you now. Uh, and that's very exciting. And so what was the deal? My understanding of why the uh, the post office thing was uh, an issue or why it was able to be shut down is because, um, you know, there was no specific control over the the on ramp there, a.k.a. the post office could then say, well, we don't like this, whereas um, the, you know, Bitcoin well has its own network of ATMs, their own infrastructure to on road people. The regulations within Canada are still the same, you know, under a thousand dollars you're good to go. Under $3,000 a day, you're good to go. You don't require all that information. I think my understanding is that the the, the post office thing was the post office not, uh, not particularly liking it, perhaps. But may, I could be wrong there. Don't quote me on that. But um, I think the fact that they've got some infrastructure set up themselves has given them uh, the ability to offer this. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, by the way, you can check out them, Bitcoin well.com slash BTC sessions, uh, because I know simply always tries to get their code in there. Uh, nonetheless, umbral OS version 1.1.0, you have terminal beta program, UX improvements and bug fixes. Uh, so they're rolling out software update to umbral home and raspberry Pi users. Um, uh, update brings terminal access, 
uh, the Umbral OS beta program and several enhancements. So terminal, you can do custom commands in Umbral OS within the app from the advanced settings menu. Uh, you can also gain early access to new features to help refine them before providing your feedback. Uh, start, stop, and troubleshoot apps directly from the right-click menu in the home screen. Uh, when the app is updating, its progress is now displayed within the app icon, making it easier to see update status at a glance. So um, congrats to the team on rolling that out. Uh, some stuff with Mutiny Wallet. Uh, apparently, there were some issues with the Atlantis Federation that is now uh, been fixed in the latest update, version 0 0.6.5. Uh, again, um, if you had this issue, please let us know if it was fixed for you after the update. Thanks to everyone that submitted locks and described their situation. Um, now, for those of unf uh, unfamiliar, let's recap what happened with the mutiny uh, update that added in the Federation. It said the best way to use mutiny right now is with our recent Fediman integration. On top of high fees, we're also hitting scaling issues. New channels may fail, go offline, and payments may fail to route. We're in the process of integrating additional LSPs. Sorry for the issues. Um, but Fediments seem to be functionally uh, uh, for initial onboarding, especially or creating new channels or in, in lieu of creating new channels going directly into a fediment um, can make sense in the interim. I've been enjoying uh, that feature. I've also, I have the Fetty app as well, um, which plays pretty nice together. Uh, and I love in the background, what I saw with the update and mutiny is that it'll show recommended federations and you can vet them yourselves. So I'm currently using the one from Bitcoin Atlantis, which is now the free Madeira federation. Um, and so I, I basically, as a user, you can say, Hey, I'm using this, or I can vouch for this one, or, you know, it's worked for me well so far. And I saw the listings of some other ones, like there's one that's uh, Odell is a part of. Um, and so, yeah, uh, either way, I think it's a cool development. Now these, you know, you don't want to put funds that you are not willing to lose. This is still very early and there's trust involved. And the way I think this will develop is over time, it'll be more of a reputational system. The thing with these is basically it's a big multi-sig. So there's a trust in the key holders of that. But as time goes on and these things become more robust and have been around for a long time, then you'll see ones that are maybe, you know, you might be comfortable with a little bit more money in it and any new ones, you should always exercise caution. Right now, everything is new. So <laughs> exercise caution, but it's still really cool to play with. And it gives you, um, once you're in a mint, instant and free transactions and perfect privacy. When you go to send out of the mint, near perfect privacy, because you're kind of hiding in the crowd and there's no indication which person sent out of the mint fully compatible with regular lightning transactions you can send to an individual user you can send via lightning to somebody in a different mint it's really cool anyways congrats to mutiny on this rollout uh wasabi wallet interface update um they have a new interface they have support for the trezor 3 and they have full rbf detection um yeah, so RBF detection accuracy of unconfirmed transactions in the mempool is now improved by considering economic replacement of transactions that did not originally signal for full replace by fee or RBF. Um, yeah, they've got better privacy warnings. Uh, coin join setting now available on music box. Uh, password is now called passphrase. Um, new sorting options, a bunch of new stuff. Um, of course... Uh, as always noted, wall, uh, Wasabi Wallet sends all CoinJoin input transactions to a chain surveillance partner, so be aware of that. <laughs> uh, either way, I figured I'd mention the update. Uh, Enuts, scan and paste LN URL. So Enuts, uh, again, Xiaomi and eCash on top of Bitcoin and Lightning. Um, this version 0.4.0 has been released. It includes support for LN URL pay through copy and paste and QR code scans, translation and minor UI fixes. Uh, I did a video on this previously if you want to check it out. Pretty cool wallet. Um, this is, I like. Uh, big news for Bitcoin developers. Blockstream has just released the Liquid Wallet Kit, LWK, to make it easier than ever to build on and integrate Liquid. Um, and so they have a developer telegram. But I hope that this is something that, much like uh, uh, LDK, Lightning Development Kit, 
um, allows, and again, as they allude to, makes it a lot easier. And we start to see more integration with liquid and lightning and those two things and fediments all side by side to integrate easily. That's kind of my dream where there's going to be on chain, there's going to be lightning, there's going to be liquid, there's going to be fediments, there's going to be all these different things going on in the background. And you just download a wallet and you give a few preferences about how you're using Bitcoin and it will be able to just kind of into it through what you've answered, what is going to be best for you based on your preferences. So I, I, I hope that's where we're going. I think that's where we're going. And I see inklings of that with things like Aqua and other wallets where they're just trying to have a unified balance and it just kind of behaves how you need it to in the background. Uh, very excited for this. I was part of a video uh, that was put together by Julian, aka Kinetic Finance, and uh, and his new channel, Get Based, which you should probably subscribe to. Anyways, he did uh, 15 years of Bitcoin in 15 minutes, and the idea was there were 15 different content creators all came together. Each one of us got assigned a year, and we each took one minute to tell everybody what happened in that year. It's pretty awesome. Michael Saylor has shared it out. Uh, it's gotten tons of views. Of course, the one that Saylor shared has gotten, I don't know, like last I saw was half a million views. It's probably a million views by now. Super cool. But please do support the original creator. Go find at kinetic underscore finance on Twitter. Share the original there and go find it on YouTube. Give him a sub. Give him a thumbs up. He put a ton, a ton of effort into it and uh, dude deserves all of the credit and uh, all of the praise that he's currently getting. But you can add to that if you see fit. Um, moving on, I dropped a tutorial earlier this week on uh, the Cold Guard Q air gapped mode uh, via QR scanning. So that is kind of the big feature of the cold card queue and I was waiting for support in a couple of different wallets so I could demo that and those demos uh, are now available so I did used it with Sparrow Wallet on desktop I also used it with Nunchuck on mobile and I showed how to Im uh, set up your wallet from scratch import it to both interfaces, uh, be able to send and receive transactions using the QR scanner, verify addresses, uh, as well as how to recover your wallet if anything happens, if it gets deleted or whatever, how to do that. Uh, I love the queue and this is kind of my daily driver and actually this is how I prefer to use it. I've done other videos on NFC or using it plugged in. I did a video on how to migrate from the Mark IV to the Q, um, but this is the primary way I feel like this wallet should be used, especially with the new QR standard that they've uh, implemented. It's a lot quicker to scan than other implementations and uh, yeah, all around, I, I quite like it. So take a peek, let me know what you think. Now also in the realm of tutorials, this was a in my opinion, for me, this was this was a big deal. Um, I have officially dropped a Spanish playlist that I will be adding to gradually over time. Uh, and this was kind of a long time coming. So I've done a full, basically taken a series of old, I mean, not that old, but I've, I've taken a series of tutorials that I think are relevant and uh, start from kind of the basics into, we'll say like mid-tier hardware type stuff. And uh, I've gotten them fully translated to Spanish and not just like a subtitle type thing. I'm talking like it's my voice speaking Spanish with CGI of my lips that make it look like I'm doing it myself, but it's not. It's AI translated. It's amazing. Um, I'm super stoked about it. So I did a, a playlist, an initial playlist of eight videos. So what did I cover? I did one on your first Bitcoin wallet, how wallets work, all of that, um, setting up, recovering, all of that. Uh, I did Blink because Blink is a commonly used, uh, albeit custodial, lightning wallet that is uh, prevalent in Latin America, especially I saw a ton of usage of it down in El Salvador. So I thought it would be useful to cover that. And then I dive into Aqua Wallet because it's got the liquid lightning combo um, and it also has Tether. A lot of people are typically using some sort of US dollar stable coin in Latin America. So that's particularly useful for them. But obviously, lightning and Bitcoin are kind of the, the prevalent thing there. 
Uh, Phoenix Wallet for full self-custodial lightning use. That has been translated as well. Also Primal for Noster so that you can do social media and get sat tips. Um, it's got a, an integrated lightning wallet with it. I also did Sparrow Wallet because in my opinion, again, just like the best, most useful desktop learning tool and wallet for managing uh, various wallets. Tap Signer because it's a low cost hardware option um, and easy to use with mobile. And then the Seed Signer because with me Premier Bitcoin, when I went down there, I learned that through their curriculum, they're actually playing with Seed Signer and building them themselves which is super awesome. So I figured, hey, let's do a translation of that. Now, a lot of this is very much in thank, uh, thanks to the Human Rights Foundation and the grant that I got back in the fall of last year. And so I've kind of quietly in, in the background been using some of those funds to get these translations done. They're, again, the AI versions of them, they're, it's much cheaper than it would have been to get it done manually, but it's still an expense. And so this has helped me do this through all of this time. And uh, there's a full playlist of all of these just on my regular channel, but it'll just be a playlist. And the plan is from here on in, um, I can basically afford to do an additional two Spanish videos each month. So please do let me know what you think uh, would be most useful, what types of uh, uh, videos I should translate next, and I will begin adding them to the playlist. And also in the realm, again, thank the HRF for the grant that I received last fall. Uh, a, a lot of this is just kind of starting to come to fruition now, but I wanted to say a big thanks to them again, and Gladstein, uh, for the setup that I've now been able to do in this in the realm of tutorials things are about to get pretty slick because I've upgraded the office and just off the screen I'm looking at it right now uh, I've set up a secondary work desk with a top-down camera and so this is going to allow me to do top-down tutorials where it's not like just me on the same desk trying to like rearrange the camera but actually like a nice view fully visible well lit, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I'm kind of in the midst of setting that up. There's still a few things that I'm going to got to put in there. But um, yeah, very excited to to have that ready for me. And uh, and and yeah, we'll be we'll be knocking them out uh, with this setup. Very much looking forward to it. So nonetheless, I want to say a big thank you again to Gladstein and the HRF for the grant that I've received. Uh, it took a little while to show what it's being used for, but it is indeed being good, put to good use. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to sign off here. We're going to round it out. Uh, be sure to check back tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern time because I have... Uh, a trifecta of awesome gentlemen joining me on the show. Uh, I've got Dave Bradley from Bitcoin Brains and co-founder of Bull Bitcoin. Uh, I've got Brian DeMint coming to talk about his uh, new book. And I've also got uh, a gentleman named Mike Cook that I've been working very closely with something on. And we're going to chat about it a little bit tomorrow as well. Anyways, guys, uh, we're going to sign off. Uh, if you can, please do click the links and check out everybody in the show notes to support the sponsors of the show. Like, subscribe, share all those things. They help a ton. And I'm going to sign off. Thank you guys very much. Have a great evening, wherever you may be. I'll see you guys next time for your Simply Session. Huddle the Bitcoin.